Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and I am sitting in a space shuttle, or at least a simulated space shuttle from the game, or simulation, uh, Orbiter. I've had so many requests to play this, and frankly, I've had played it in the past, and not been... I, it's not really been my thing, let's see. Right. But yeah, I'm going to try launching the space shuttle into orbit, and the reason I'm going for the space shuttle is... Uh, because it's a real spacecraft. I actually had one previous dry run where I flew the Delta Glider into orbit, but that's pretty easy. The Delta Glider has way more Delta V and thrust than the Space Shuttle. The Space Shuttle is vastly more realistic and has much smaller margins for error. So I'm going to see if I can take this into orbit. I really haven't figured this game out. I haven't looked through the manual too much. I'm really coming in and I'm going to try to you know, fly this by the seat of my pants. I tried to look around for like a multifunction display that would show me how to actually, you know, what trajectory to fly into orbit. I didn't really get much in the way of clues from that, so instead I've just switched it to the, the orbit display, MFD, and I'm going to kind of read the numbers off that and guess what I need to do. Uh, and on the other hand, other side, I'm just going to have general, you know, artificial horizons and vertical velocities and all these things. Anyway, I'm kind of in this near vertical climb and I'm heading 90 degrees. I'm going to aim to go east. So that will hopefully put me into orbit. <laughs> the space shuttles were apparently capable of going directly into a polar orbit. And uh, that was one of the military requirements. So that might, means that it does have, you know... A certain amount of excess delta V compared to what you would need to get into an equatorial orbit. And that gives me hope that I will be able to get there using my guesswork. So yeah, I think we're up at 25 kilometers. I'm going to move this across just a little. I, I don't really know when the space shuttle turns. I might be turning too soon. It, it's really hard to tell. Uh, you can see there the the external view. What you can see actually is the engines are kind of splayed out. The engines all would it fire through the center of mass of the combined stack, and they would have a rather large gimbal range to adjust this. Now, if you've ever tried to build a space shuttle in Kerbal Space Program, you will realize that they flip out all the time because you can it's very hard to do to line these things up to fire through the relevant center of mass and there we go we've jettisoned the srbs that that's 1000 tons worth of of the rocket that's half its launch weight are in those two srbs i know they look small but you have to realize that those srbs are packed with you know solid high density fuel the main tank is bigger but most of its volume is actually taken up by hydrogen which is r pretty low density uh, the hydrogen and oxygen in that external tank are, of course, powering the space shuttle main engines, which were uh, some of the most complicated engines built at the time, I guess. Uh, I remember an interesting factoid was that the, the, ro the computers on them... Well, the original computer was something from Honeywell or something, but it used core memory. Later, they upgraded the software, or they upgraded the engine computer to use a Motorola 68000, which... Is a processor that I spent years finding the secrets out. It was in it was in my uh, Atari ST, and it was also in the Amiga. But I got pretty darn proficient at uh, messing around with Motorola 68000. And then when the Palm Pilots came out, they used essentially a 64k, a 68k instruction set as well. So I was like totally at home with that. So yeah, interesting fact is that they each computer has two processors and there's two computers on each uh engine so each engine has basically four cpus <laughs> to make sure that they don't you know fail and uh they're generating some you know crazy amount of thrust which of course is now pushing me forwards at a whole well it says my acceleration is 4.5 meters per second so i'm guessing uh that that is including gravity drag so um yeah, let's let's see what's it saying. Uh, my Apple Apps altitude is six six seven zero, so that's going to be two hundred and seventy kilometers. I, I forget the exact radius of the Earth, but I'm guessing I want to get it up of about three hundred at least, right? I I don't know exactly, but I'm just going to follow the. I'm just trying to fly a ballistic, you know, trajectory, a proper gravity turn, and I'm just 
aiming the nose of the spacecraft through the prograde vector so that we continue to gain velocity along the most efficient path. I'm not sure if I'm going to make it up to orbital velocity when, whether it'll be po whether it'll reach orbital velocity before I reach apoapsis or af afterwards. Hopefully, I don't have to, you know, adjust my trajectory. I don't know. It's starting to come down. Um, actually, it says APT. APT, I guess, is my time to apoapse. So that's 100 seconds. And since I'm accelerating at about 1G, that means I'm going to gain about another kilometer per second. I'm going to be about 3 or 4 kilometers per second at this point. Might need to uh, make some adjustments. But uh, let's just work through it. Now... You might have seen earlier, there is actually a proper like 3D modeled cockpit with lots and lots of switches, but I don't think all the switches work. At least I couldn't figure out which ones worked or not. Uh, I thought there might be switches and stuff to activate the, you know, to drop the SRBs and fire those, but I just held, you know, the button to increase thrust and it just worked. I'm flying all this with keyboard, by the way, so... Uh, my joystick is kind of sitting over in the corner there and it wants to always drift off center. I think I'm going to have to buy a new joystick at some point. But it has served me well over the decade and a half that I've owned it. <laughs> anyway, we're now up to three kilometers per second. Excellent. We're almost halfway. Uh, we'll be get to halfway to orbital velocity soon. But we're definitely coming up on Apple apps here. Yeah. I figured out how the multifunction displays worked, and there's no. I'm I'm totally just guessing how this works. There there may be an MFD that will show me in the heads up display how you know what path to fly into orbit, but I haven't seen that. Uh, you know, I, I made a point of not actually reading any of the documentation because it's funner that way, right? <laughs> I find it quite amusing to, to look around, especially a mass of switches, even if most of the switches don't do anything. There are a ton of mods for this game, of course, which will add... Some of them just add sound. That's one thing. There's, like, no sound in this base version, at least if there is sound that I'm missing it. Okay, I'm, I'm pulling myself out of this dive. I'm going to try and get my vertical velocity up a little, now that I'm accelerating at about 2G, I'm, yeah, I'm trying to stop. Now, now going down at 200 meters per second, I really want that to not happen. I want to pick up some vertical speed so that I can get up to orbital speed. Uh, the question is whether I'm going to run out of fuel before I get up to orbital speed or before I've managed to correct all this. Uh, just keep the nose up. I am slowing down a little. Um, I think the the f main fuel... Okay, this is my rocket fuel, yeah. I, I, guess, I guess my control is coming from gimballing those main engines because I'm not seeing my RCS supply drop. I wonder how I turn on RCS. That would be a useful thing to know because I'm going to get into orbit and hopefully it'll just come on automatically. If not... I'll have to go hunting around for a switch. In the in the Delta Glider, I had to hunt around to find the, the RCS switch. I was going up into orbit, and then suddenly I lost control. And there's like a switch where you have to click with the right button. It's like a twisty switch that turns it on. The Delta Glider, of course, is completely, you know, imaginary spacecraft, but it's great for beginners, apparently, in, in Orbiter. Yeah, so... If you, you know, if you really want to have a cockpit where all the switches do something, there is a project to recreate the whole Apollo program and literally have every single switch work and do something. And not only that, they'll simulate like the fuel and the temperature controls and the, you know, everything, basically. There's actually a simulated Apollo guidance computer as well in there if you want to do it. That's a mod that I looked at, but I realized that... I probably wouldn't have the time to figure it all out. <laughs> if you actually go to their site and look at the documentation, what they're supplying is PDF scans from NASA's archives, uh, basically showing, you know, the command module user manual. <laughs> basically, it's just, you know, the position of every single switch. And I, I actually went and tried to find the SCE to AUX switch that was famously... Uh, you know, ground control's famous, most famous moment. 
Regardless, I am a terribly practical person, which is why I'm flying with the, the heads-up display that lets me see everything so I can pay attention to everything. Oh crap, I'm in orbit already! Um, okay, wait, how do I kill my, velo my thrust again? There we go, there we go. And, okay, that's good. Um, looks like my Apogee is going to be like a thousand kilometers, great. Um... That's okay, the Van Allen belt started around 1,200 kilometers, so we're we're mostly going to be okay there. Especially if I don't stay in orbit for too long. Oh, look at that. How serene it is in space. Now, floating around, looking for something to do. I guess it's going to travel all the way around the other side of the planet, so I should probably look for the... How do you do time acceleration? That's something i got to think about. Oh look, there's nice spacecraft. You see the hatch on the side that they would use? And... There's no buttons on this screen. I, I don't think there's a time acceleration button inside the cockpit. As beautiful as it is, maybe if we punch the right numbers into the computer, maybe, maybe if you punch 1985 into the computer and travel at 88 miles an hour? No, that's not gonna work. That's my environmental controls. And oof, yep, somewhere there. I get is that a throttle? I'm guessing it is. And that all looks very important. And oh, he's got his own heads-up display. I wonder if I could sit in that seat instead. Why? Why is? Why are you sitting in the left-hand seat? Is that the captain's thing? Isn't like the captain and his right-hand man? I guess that's how it works. Yeah, right-hand man comes from Roman days, apparently, where you know you would have. You'd have a pincer-like army, apparently, and the left dude would be important, but the guy on the right was considered the most important. He would be your right-hand man. Okay, still haven't thought about where to find this uh, time acceleration control. Will I break down and read the manual? Will I? Uh, I do have a laptop here sitting. I can look at things, but maybe if I just push buttons randomly... Um, uh, two F2, nope, that seems to be missed. Oh, F3 is like a target thing. Ah, F4, F4, that's the one. There is a, a time accelerate window. Yes, there we go, times 10. And bring this up, not not bad. Maybe we should go for 10, times 100. That's more like it. That's the way we roll here, 100 times faster than reality. And of course, this is actually simulating all the way it's not like Kerbal Space Program where things are going on rails. At least this isn't. Um, apparently, the the Apollo simulator there, they have a version which they limit you to times ten times acceleration because the Apollo guidance computer is being emulated, and they can't run the emulation fast enough supposedly. So, you know, if you're going to travel to the moon in that, you can only do it at ten times normal speed, which means you're going to be spending several hours in deep space. Unless, maybe you can shut down the guidance computer, who knows? Anyway, let me point this darn thing around. We are looking to burn prograde so that we can actually adjust our orbit, use the last of the fuel in our tank. I, I'm... Okay, so with the real shuttle, you wouldn't do this. With the real shuttle, you basically do one burn and then you drop the main tank and you circularize your orbit using the orbital maneuvering system, I believe. I could be wrong there. And the main tank is frequently dumped with, with fuel left over. There you go. You see the engines, of course, firing through the center of mass? That's us. Uh, you see that... I, oh, it's, it's automatically switched over to the orbital maneuvering system. Which... Oh, that's great. Um, I'm now scraping along the edge of the tank. Basically, probably stripping off all those... You know, a very important protective tiles. Um, maybe there's a button. Maybe I'm supposed to have dumped that first. Uh, and there's probably a button somewhere to switch between... Oh, yeah, RCS, which I should have switched to linear mode and just done the detach manually. Okay, well, I've doomed my astronauts to a fiery death as they return to uh, the planet Earth. But um, while we're here, let's do a mission. Let's uh, see what we've got. I'm looking to look and... Well, I believe the purpose of this mission scenario is to launch a satellite, so I guess I need to figure out how to open the cargo doors. The the, do the doors, the doors, the doors. Um, 
I don't know, those those are all look like plumbing and valve switches and things like that. And that's the control stuff. I wouldn't think it would be like on the main panel. Um, is there... You would think the docking bay... I don't know. Uh, these are all looking very complicated. And I'm not able to re make head nor tail of half of these. I'm hoping it... I'm hoping I've got access to them here. Um, I, okay, I'm going to look up the manual. I've got another... I have another laptop sitting here and I shall do a quick check around to see if I can find out how to do this. I want those doors to open. I should probably put this into a correct orbital attitude as well. I, I believe that... Uh, I believe they travel backwards through the, the through um, their orbit with um, upside down, and the reason is that they, if they hit space debris, they want it to hit the engines rather than the crew cabin. Well, there's that fuel tank sitting there. Maybe I'll just burn my engines and put a little more distance between me and it. After all, you know you can't trust those orange things in space. Okay, well I had done some looking up and I found the, the button to bring up the UI, control in space. And there's a nice UI with a bunch of buttons that I'm pushing here. And the doors start opening, but they're not opening. Um, okay, I've only got one door opening and I have no indication for what I'm doing wrong. I've switched all the switches and messing things back and forth, but... uh. This is a disaster. It looks like this mission will have to be aborted. Oh well, it was flown so well up until now. And, uh, unfortunately a hardware failure. Uh, I'm, I'm presuming I didn't damage it when I hit that external tank, right? There's a, there's a satellite in there. There's the docking array and the robot arm, all, um, all completely useless. Well, um, maybe I'll play some more Orbiter, but, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Really, if you if this gets like 20,000 views, I might go and play more Orbiter. <laughs> but until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.